the unit we are looking at here are the amines. Now, amines are uh, an important group of compounds in the organic chemistry, and we need to have a closer look at the way we name amines, and then we continue further and have a look at how they are prepared and the few reactions that we need to pay attention to. Now, amines are coming from ammonia. The name clearly indicates that to us. When we are, uh, the, the amines are found widely in living organisms. They are something like trimethylamine, for example, is found in fish and it is responsible for the odor of fish. Uh, so you can imagine amines do not always have such a very pleasant odor. Then, when we continue to the naming of the amines, let's have a look at the classes of amines. Like we have with alcohols or alkyl halides, we can refer to them as primary, secondary or tertiary. They are a little bit different from what we did with the alcohols. If we pay attention to the alcohols again, in the alcohols, if we have an alcohol where our hydroxyl group is bonded to a carbon bonded to one other carbon, we say I have a primary alcohol. So primary, in the case of alcohols, to, to, to classify, we have a look at the carbon to which the OH is bonded. Secondary alcohols, we have our OH oops, bonded onto a carbon that is bonded to two other carbons in turn. And then we say we have a secondary. So every time you classify an alcohol, you have to have a look at the carbon to which the OH is bonded. Now with the amines, it's a bit different. When we do the amines, we look at the N and C, but we know we started from ammonia and now check how many of the H's here had been substituted. So if we have something like NH2 and you have a CH3, we can see here you still have two H's, so one of them had been substituted, so this is going to be a primary amine. But you can even have it then like this, where you have still, you still have there the NH2 and only one of the H's is uh, substituted. So this will still be a primary amine. So it's not going to be the same way we did it for the alcohols before. Okay, we'll compare these two. If you have the following alcohol. You will see there, to classify this alcohol, we would check that carbon there and we say it is bonded to one, two, three other carbons and then you have the OH. So this uh, alcohol we have is a tertiary alcohol. If I have a similar amine, have a look here. And you have your NH2 group there. This one you will refer to as a primary amine. Because in the case of the amine, it's not the carbon you look at. You have to have a look at the nitrogen and make sure how many of the hydrogens had been substituted. And in this, this case, it's only one because you still have two of them there. So that is a little bit different from the, the co compounds we did before. Now, if we name them then, uh, we are going to have a look at that uh, attachment, that substituent, and we have here a methyl followed by the word amine. Two of them will become dimethyl amine, and you see here you still have the symmetrical amine. Or you have three of them, and you have the trimethyl amine. Now, every time we are dealing with the amines, then the word amine is going to follow. 
if we take something like this where you have the cyclopentyl and you have the NH2 cyclopentyl amine or the third butyl group, third butyl amine, dimethyl amine, we stated aniline that you know very well. So that's the way to, 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 to go when you name them. If we have an amine which is asymmetrically substituted, you don't have the same type of group. Look at this one for example. You have here a methyl group and here ethyl group. It's not the same thing. If that happened, the longer chain is, will be chosen as our uh, parent. So here we are going to say we have uh, our ethane as our parent and you will rem uh, name that one as n methyl ethyl amine. There also a difference from what uh, the things that we have done before. In the case of the amine, if there is a, a substituent, we are going to make use of that letter N to tell that on the N you have a methyl group that is substituting the 1H there. That is, so we are going to make use of that way to refer. Have a look at the next example there. You have the N and we have an ethyl group and another ethyl group and then a propyl group. Again, it is asymmetric. It's not the same thing you have everywhere. So this is the longest of them all. There you have two carbons, two carbons. That one will then be our parent. So again, you say on the N. And again on the N. You have an ethyl group and an ethyl group. So it's diethyl. And then you refer to your parent. Propyl amine. Uh, there you have a, even a more uh, of a difference because all three of our substituents are different. You can see here, I didn't even ask you, have a look at that first one we have there, the n methyl ethyl amine. Can you see this one will be a? secondary amine because you still have one H on the end but the other two is now substituted. Here we have a tertiary amine because all three of the H's had been substituted. Same thing here, you are going to have three different groups on that end and you have a, a, a tertiary type of amine. Now if we name this one we have one carbon, we have two carbons, and in that cyclohexane ring we have six. So that is going to be the parent because we have more carbons in there. Now, if you then name it, you are going to have a methyl group attached to the nitrogen. You are going to have an ethyl group attached. Uh, look at two of them according to alphabetical order. Which one should be first? Our ethyl. So here you cannot put the N, N together like we did it there. There we could do it because you had ethyl, ethyl. So they were exactly the same. And that's why because it's a diethyl, we could say N, N. For this one, you have to separate because they are different things. And then you say, I have N. Ethyl, N, methyl, alphabetical order, as we are used to do. Then the parent chain is the cyclohexyl, and the followed by the word amine again. When you have something else attached to the alkyl group, then the amine Instead of the E you would have had for the, the cyclohexane, you are going to put the word amine. So look at this one for example. What I have there is the cyclohexane ring 
on that, you see that one, if it was just like that, we would have said is, is the cyclohexyl amine. That's it. But now you have other substituents onto that. So now we are going to say what we have here is this cyclohexane compound and that will then be, that amine will be our number one. Going there, two, three, four, five, six. So what is the name for our compound? On number four, again on number four, we have a methyl and a methyl dimethyl cyclohexane and there where you would have had the E for the cyclohexane only there we replace it now by the word amine have a look at that long chain one you have there you have one two three four five in the chain so it's a pentane you have and then again in the place of the E, you are going to put the amine, but we have an amine group there, and again we have an amine group there. So you are going to have one on number one of your chain, one on number five of your chain, so it's a pentane, but on number one and five, we have the two amines. So pentane, and in the place of the E then, one, five, diamine. Here, we have the, 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 the uh, methyl group on our uh, amine itself, and then this is onto a, a long chain. So again, you have another substituent ne, on your end. So you will have to say this should be the parent chain in this case. It's the longer one that we have there. And on the end, we have another substituent, the short one, and that's the methyl. So N methyl and then hexane and where is our amine group position one two three hexane three amine so that's basically then the way in which we do naming uh, if it happened that we have more than one functional group in this case for example we see we have there our amine group but we also have an alcohol group the alcohol is much higher in priority than the amine. So this thing is going to be an alcohol. And you will refer to your amine group as a substituent, and then we make use of the word amino to do so. And also, because of the higher priority, the OH site will have the smaller number. So there you will start with your number one, two, three, four, five. So you will say on number five, there's an A minor, and we have in our chain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's a heptanol. And the O, the OH is on number one, hepton one O. So you see the moment there's more than one functional group, Make sure which one is higher in priority. Amines are low in priority. Alcohols or the other groups will basically be higher in priority than the amine. Even here, where you have your carboxylic acid group and you have your amino group, for sure that carboxylic group is far higher in priority. And we can see we have two uh, different substituents on the benzene, we know when we have two, we use either orto, meta or para. What is the situation we have here? Number one, number three, so it will be meta. And then you state that a minor group of yours and we know this has got the common name of benzoic acid. So uh, same thing is going to happen here. You have a benzoic acid group and an a minor group. Benzoic acid is going to have the priority, so that will become a substituent. We can try some of the exercises that is given to us here. You see, we have here an amine group, the NH, and then attached to it, we have the methyl group and the ethyl group, so it's not symmetric. Because it's not symmetric, we have to decide which is the parent chain. Because that's two carbons and that's only one, parent will be this one. 
So that one is a replacement, it's a substituent and it's on the N. So you start with the N, state that methyl group and then the parent part which is ethyl amine. Here, while we are busy with this, have a quick look. What is the type of amine we have here? What is the class if you have to classify it? There's one H still remaining. The other two H's on the N had been substituted by the ethyl and by the methyl. So this one is going to be a secondary amine. Here, what is the class of the amine? No H left on the end. So this, all three of the H's on the ammonia molecule had been substituted by organic groups. So this is going to be a tertiary amine. Now, it is absolutely symmetric here. And what do I have in all three positions? A cyclohexyl, another one, and another one. So this we can refer to as trihexyl. A mine. Oh, the what about the cyclo? Tri cyclo hexo A mine. We have there. The next one you have the cyclo hexyl group again. You have an ethyl group, you have a methyl group, it's not symmetric. Which one is going to be our our parent chain or our parent compound? In this case, not a chain, it's cyclic. But there you have six where the other two is very short chains that you have. So that will be our parent. And then we have to state these two. It's an ethyl and a methyl and we do it alphabetically. So you start first with your ethyl. Then we state the methyl and every time you have to put that in in front. And our parent chain here is cyclohexyl and followed by the word amine to give us the, the complete name for that one. Here, what is the class of our amine? You still have one H, the other two had been substituted, so this again will be a secondary amine. And the the two we have here is uh, symmetric again, so we need not to make use of that N way of referring. We can just say we have here I, and what are the two things we have here? Isopropyl, another isopropyl, so di I, so propyl amine will be the name for this one. Here we have a long chain. So we are going to name that chain of ours. If I start on this side, one, two, three, four, one, two. So it's better to start this side. One, two, three, four. And state your substituent you have there. So on number two, there's a methyl. Then our parent is four. So it is a butane and there, where you are supposed to have the E, you state your amine. In this case, diamine, because you have one there, you have one there, on number one, on number four. So one, four, diamine. Now, that gives us some idea of how you are going to name your amines. These heterocyclic amines, you can have a look at, but we need not really to study them. It's just important to know the other basic amines. Thank you.